How's it going folks? It's your boy Satoshi coming right back at you for another video where today we're going to discuss the topic of DeSci or decentralized science. Now decentralized this, decentralized that, everything is becoming decentralized over time. Why? Because blockchain is a superior technology, which is why we're here to help you uncover the best possible sectors coming out in the future like DeSci or DPIN or the uh, centralized or DAO or you know all of these things that you can learn more about on the Satoshi Club resources I'm going to drop some links in the description below and uh, you know it's just a lot of education a lot of free knowledge for you all that's why I'm here that's what I like to spread so let's get into it what is decentralized science or DSI well it refers to the science uh, or use of blockchain technology and its features such as tokens uh, decentralized autonomous organizations uh, NFTs, etc., to make various aspects of uh, scientific research and collaboration more open, incentivized, and community driven. So, it uses blockchain and decentralization to reform funding, data sharing, publishing, and collaboration in science. And there's a few projects that I will mention later on that actually help build these decentralized systems, right? Cool AI generated picture. And now let's get into understanding it. So, Vitalik, uh, the founder of Ethereum, said, What are some ways in which emerging opening uh, emerging open decentralized technologies can make science better. So he's wondering about it, which means we should be wondering about it. And it means that there probably will be projects coming out later in the future that will uh, you know, talk about this uh, and obviously try to solve these problems. Now, you could ask yourself if there's an online community of scientists, uh, for example, conducting research in a non-hierarchical and loosely organized manner, uh, but never talked about Web3, DAO, crypto or blockchain, should that still be considered DeSci? Probably not, right? So if you have a community, uh, like there's a lot of communities online that is kind of decentralized, but still has no way to reward people and track things on a ledger and, uh, you know, tokenize to be able to provide uh, incentives uh, of payments for people who actually contribute to as nodes to the ecosystem or as research or as, a, as scientists. Well, no, I don't think it should be called DeSci, but that's why we have the blockchain so that we, we actually can call these things these side right so let's talk about problems in the traditional scientific field and the value of death right the value of death refers to the context of research and innovation a very specific specific value as we can see right here uh, between academia and the industry where the critical period is actually uh, there because there is difficulties achieved in the middle right crossing this value of death demands a novel more effective approach and blockchain technology with its distinctive characteristics may assist with addressing this challenge right so we have basic science translational science and clinical science over time on the x-axis resources on the y-axis obviously it takes a lot more time to get noticed by the industry now so here are some key focuses of decentralized science and i do recommend you pause the video and check these out pretty cool lots of info in one spot right here um, research and publishing uh, obviously the revolution of the research and publishing process uh, that has been a point of criticism in scientific communities, data sharing and funding, right? The rise of borderless and immutable funding uh, facilitated by crypto. And it's a new way of crowdfunding that's introduced for scientific research. So let's talk about the problems. First and foremost, research and publishing, right? Uh, there's an extensive list of requirements that must be checked off before research can even begin. Uh, and this, you know, goes into peer review problems where limited value uh, while significantly slow down the communication of uh, new site, new insights, right? So what this basically means is that peer reviews are very, very slow to collect and it takes a lot of time and uh, it's a big uh, inefficiency when it comes to research and publishing. IP or intellectual property protections like patents uh, can also hinder the open sharing of info and halt the scientific process. Um, gatekeeping so even if scientists want to publish their findings scientific journals can still control whether the work sees the light of day gatekeeping right uh, kind of difficult as well and uh, not easy when dealing with corporations and high fees where many scientific journals face criticism from the academic uh, community for their high open access publica publication fees with accusations of unethical profit margins that outstrip some of the tech giants so uh, this is also very difficult. It gets solved by decentralization because there's no middleman taking a cut, uh, as with a lot of things in DeFi, DeSci, DeepIn, and more technologies, right? If you want to watch my DeepIn video, you can also do so probably down below, left, right, or center. Um, but anyways, let's go into blockchain solutions for research and publishing in science, right? 
Uh, open science decentralization, it restructures known centralized structures and its problems, and it's very necessary, right? And this new system could recognize various forms of psi contributions beyond journal publications, because science has known many breakthroughs at the hands of those that were not part of the scientific establishment. We have Research Hub as an example, right? It's a scientific discussion platform powered by crypto. It fosters a collaborative open science model where researchers can share their favorite research articles, discover papers, and be part of a scientific community. Their ultimate goal is to become the go-to platform for scientific discussions with an incentivization layer that rewards contributors and this way will accelerate scientific breakthroughs, right? Pretty cool. The incentivization is done by the token research coin or RSC, which is the community reward token and the currency of Research Hub. Now this is tokenization of intellectual property or IP NFTs. Uh, they have the potential to revolutionize how IP is owned and managed, whereby the control and monetization opportunities shift to creators and researchers rather than organizations where the research was published. Once again, it makes it a lot easier. It makes gate gatekeeping a lot less of a problem. And obviously, transparency is a key factor here. Funding in traditional science is also uh, coming with a lot of problems, right? Extensive grant applications are one of them. So this long duration of pre-publication work could hinder risk-taking and innovations. We have misaligned interests. So the small concentration of top contributors uh, represents a conflict of interest. Uh, we have lack of incentives. So we can observe that scientists are not sufficiently rewarded for practices like transparency. Uh, replications of other work and more. Now CZ is even talking about biotech, so it's definitely something to keep in mind. And we have funding through tokenization. So IP NFTs could not only represent ownership of intellectual property, as mentioned above, but could also open the door for fundraising of projects. And we have an interesting one called Molecule Protocol, which is a platform that bridges the gap between biomedical research projects and the funding that they require to progress. It serves two main types of users, researchers and investors, and their goal is to provide biotech DAO builders with IP NFT legal frameworks, organizational templates, funding, talent, and more. Now, IP non-fungible tokens, uh, similar to standard NFTs, and uh, manage the ownership rights to a particular asset, serving as a key to the underlying project. Very interesting as well. Risk on funding uh, or funding through tokenization enables a continuous fundraising and brings liquidity and changes the risk profile on short term horizons. So this different risk profile means that different types of investors with different scales of capital can get involved. Uh, for example, we can see the Ethereum founder of Vitalik Buterin donating $1.5 billion in SHIB to Crypto Relief India in 2021. Quite cool as well. Right. Obviously, it's a part of crowdfunding. Decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs refers to a wide variety of projects and a lot of things are being developed. And here's a few examples. We have Vita DAO. Uh, that's the first collective that funds early stage longevity, uh, longevity research and wants to extend healthy human life and health span by collecting funds for early stage research projects and spinning out startups to commercialize them. Raise 4.1 million. Maybe you can check them out. Um, VitaDAO aims to decentralize these assets, making them widely accessible to people across the globe. Athena DAO, right, women's health research is underfunded, indicates a lack of research and appropriate solutions for women's health issues, which could have major consequences. Athena's DAO, uh, DAO's mission is to change the landscape of women health research. Pretty cool as well. We have Valley DAO. It's a community of scientists, entrepreneurs, and enthusiasts that is democratizing asset access to synthetic biology, a field with significant potential for addressing global sustainability challenges. We have bio.xyz. It's a decide DAO accelerator. So it's the accelerator of some of the DAOs discussed above, such as Vita, Valley, and Athena. To apply for the bio DAO launch, interested individuals are required to submit an application, which will be thoroughly reviewed. So if you want funding, you can do so as well. You have the Genomes DAO, built on the belief that every individual should own their own genome. You can get your DNA sequenced if you want to do so as well. And the data is stored securely due to the blockchain, right? That's pretty much it for today's video. What's the future of this site? Well, it's being shaped as we speak. We debate about its effectiveness and necessity, but there's no doubt that decentralization and blockchain are going to be a hefty part of it in the future. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one.